Hello and welcome to Footnotes, the Cicerone podcast, a podcast to inspire you about outdoor travel and activities in the UK and across the world. I'm Hannah and you can email me with your thoughts or questions at live at cicerone.co.uk. You can subscribe to our podcast to make sure you don't miss new episodes or you can sign up to our newsletter for all our latest news, events and guidebooks. Visit cicerone.co.uk for further details. Today I'm talking to Timmy Mallet. You might remember remember Timmy from his number one hit Itsy Bitsy Teeny Weeny Yellow Polka Dot Bikini or perhaps from his days as a children's entertainer alongside his famous mallet but in recent years he's become an accomplished fine artist with exhibitions around the world and he also undertook a very special cycling pilgrimage to Santiago de Compostela in Spain. The Cicerone guidebook to cycling the Camino de Santiago covers about 800 kilometres but actually Timmy cycled over 3,000 kilometres, motivated by his late brother, Martin. Anyway, for now, I will bring on Timmy. Hi, Timmy. Thanks, Hannah. It's a a real pleasure to be here. And, you know, Cicerone does such a great job. And you're an inspiration, actually, to so many adventurers. It's one of those things you think about going on an adventure and you think, has anybody else done anything like this? Uh, And the first point of call is always going to be to your wonderful guidebook. So uh, thanks for having me tonight. Perfect. I think we can probably finish it there. You've said all you need to. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Well, uh, you know, the Camino de Santiago is an ancient pilgrimage route and it's been around for about a thousand years, maybe longer. And the lovely thing about this is that I'm not the first. I won't be the last to do it. It's just a little bit of my turn. And I like the fact that in those glory days of pilgrimage back in the Middle Ages, roughly quarter of a million million people a year would set off from their home and make their way either by foot or donkey or, you know, in my case, on a bike from their home to Santiago de Compostela in northwest Spain. Uh, And you go, why are you going to Santiago? Well, that's the the special place to head to is the cathedral, because in the cathedral are the bones of St. James. And St. James was the brother or cousin of Christ. And it's a very special, powerful place to aim to. And it became really popular when the Crusades were around. And, you know, getting to Jerusalem was a little bit tricky because there was rather a lot of warfare going on there and then you know you might go to Rome but then there was a a schism and hey let's go to Spain we like the wine Uh, And so there are these wonderful routes going across Europe and you go, oh, my goodness me, that is a lot of different routes that you can take from wherever you live. And and that's just part of Europe. The lovely Cicerone guides deal mainly with the the bit here as from Saint-Jean-Pied-de-Port, which is on the French side of the Pyrenees, across here to Santiago de Compostela. Now, this is about 500 miles. It's what, 900 K. And this is a very popular walking pilgrimage that people will make in five and a half weeks or so. Uh, You head across the great regions of northern Spain, but you can start way down here at Malaga and and go up the Via de la Plata or head through Madrid or come from Barcelona. Uh, So there are loads of great routes. It's a very popular place to start is Le Puy en Valais. But I wanted to start uh, as a traditional pilgrim from my home. And that means from where I live in Berkshire and to cycle across England, cross France, cross Spain to Santiago de Compostela onto the coast and then back again. Um, And I just rather like the idea of the very first decision I make would be at my gate. Uh, you know, do I turn left or right? And the inspiration for all of this, for doing something like this, is to be in the moment. We don't often do this. We we tend to do an awful lot of planning of things and working out life will be great when uh, I get the new job or the promotion or, you know, a new outfit or something great happens. It will be better. Uh, but being in the moment means just being absorbed in the here and now of living. And what inspires me is my brother. Yay! My brother, my Martin, uh, very special. I love this picture. Uh, And actually, tragedy struck because a week before I set off, dear Martin died. 
And my big brother, Paul, found these Martin Mallet name tags and said, hey, I wonder if you can take those with you and use them to mark your journey. I thought that's a good idea. So Martin with Down syndrome, language and learning difficulty could be my companion along the way. And so I found myself leaving those name tags at particular poignant places along the way. So in a vineyard or, or in a church, a, a wayside marker, a castle, and each one is shown on the map in my book. This is the map I drew of my route. So you can see across Berkshire, down through Hampshire to Portsmouth, Ferry to San Marlo, Mont Saint-Michel down the way of the Plantagenets through the Loire Valley, Charente, and then through Aquitaine. I, I adore history. Eleanor of Aquitaine is one of my heroes. Uh, and down to Saint-Jean-Pied-de-Port, and then over this enormous mountain range of the Pyrenees, yikey crikey, uh, and across northern Spain through Navarre, Rioja, Pamplona, Burgos, Castile, the plains of Burgos, uh, Tempranillo, I'm mentioning all these wines here, uh, over the mountains again and at Pomfereda I turned left onto the Camino in Vienna that's the winter Camino which avoids the snowy tops of Osobrero into Santiago de Compostela. Uh, and I didn't stop there because I pedaled onto Finisterre to the ends of the earth and to Mushir, which features in a favorite film of mine, The Way. And then I came back over the mountains of Asturias uh, on the Camino Primitivo. I'm, I'm doing lots of different Camino routes here. O Oviedo along the Dinosaur Coast to uh, and the Camino del Norte to Santander. Boat back across to Portsmouth. And all those numbers refer to different places that I've got a Martin Mallet name tag. And in my book, I, I've marked them, which means you can find the exact place I've been to and where I've stopped and why I thought this was a, a, a special place. If you find one, let me know, do us a favour, leave it where it is and somebody else can find it too. But a really great pleasure to do something like that. And I am uh, delighted that my journey is marked a little bit like that. Now, when you're going to go and do your pilgrimage, choose the right time to go. You might not, for instance, want to go in the beast from the east. <laughs> I must be nuts. Oh, my goodness. I set off on the very first mile of my journey from home. The chain snapped. Ah, oh, And then I'm getting flooded, awful conditions. And I'm thinking, why am I doing this? This I must be utterly, utterly bonkers. Uh, and almost immediately, my spirits from the excitement of departure went right down to rock bottom. I've bitten off more than I can chew here. And then somebody said to me, just a moment, pay attention to each little bit, you know, Measure the journey between here and the cup of coffee, between here and, and the next town. And that way, I can remember absolutely every bit of the journey. And when I got into France and I get these big, wide landscapes like this with the big sky, I'm going, wow. The first thing I think of is I'm really rather small in this picture here. There's a big windmill, there's a tiny bike, big sky. And I'm heading, Hannah, for Mont Saint-Michel. It's one of the great places of Europe. And I stood there on the barrage above the river Cousinon and painted with the bells ringing and gulls flying over and that spire of that huge monastery there is like a pair of clasped hands praying to God and I was thinking wow this is special and this is the only place on my entire two-month trip that I booked somewhere in advance because I knew I wanted to stay here and I wanted to stay in the pilgrim hostel which is right at the very top up here what I didn't realize is there's one road up here <laughs> it's all steps <laughs> And I've got 25 kilos on the back of my bike with these panniers and I'm going to lift them all off and carry the bike up, the, up to the top. But it just felt very special. And in the morning, the rain came down and it was lashing and wild. And I was like, oh, crikey by Jingo, I've got the mini beast from the east coming back again. But I'm thinking people have stayed in places like this throughout the centuries. And it's just really rather special to think, my night, that's where I'm staying. Being a pilgrim is about being in the moment and making yourself vulnerable. That's a very odd phrase to use, being vulnerable. But your days are made up of making decisions. Each morning you wake up, I don't know where I'm going to stay tonight, what I'm going to eat, who I'm going to meet, which way am I going to go. So when you get to a crossroads, it's a decision. Every single part of this journey is your own. When I get to somewhere to stay each night, I'm hoping to do around about 65, 75k a day. 
Sometimes it's less, might be 40, very rarely more. Sometimes it was about a hundred. But when I got to my twin town, I loved this banner that they had up for me. Go, go, Timmy, go. You know, I've no idea whether this is encouragement or an instruction. <laughs> uh, so where am I going to stay? Well, I stay in all sorts of different pilgrim hostels. Top left, I'm in a little dorm with these little bunk beds and you get a, a duvet and a pillow. And I'm on the bottom bunk and the bloke at the top, he had rather pungent feet, but a very cute little room. The bunks were nice. E each one has got a power supply and you need it to charge up your phone for connectivity, Wi-Fi, a little sidelight. Floors are heated, nice facilities, somewhere to lock the bike up this is really important i'm on a timmy bike and i've got to charge the battery each night and then i need to know that it's secure and it's properly locked up because i don't want to wake up in the middle of the night go is my bike okay so these things are really important but more important than that are the people you meet god bless him this is hans Hans is in his 70s and he comes from Switzerland and each year he sets off uh, and takes three months to go and make his way across a different Camino route to Santiago. And on this particular evening, he and I demolished a bottle of rosé and we had fish fingers and fried eggs and chatted away for the evening. And it was just lovely. Just look at that smiling face. You know how we judge the place we stayed or the place we're going on the people we meet. If we like it, it's because the people were nice and special. Uh, and you meet them in all sorts of different ways. Like, for instance, Hannah, the 10 second photo opportunity that turned into an act of random kindness. I stopped because I like those blue shutters. I like the purple wisteria. I saw that. I thought, well, that looks nice. I'll just take a photo. And I got my phone out. And as I did so, these two ladies said, bonjour, blah, 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 blah. can I help you? And I said, oh, I really like your garden and the blue shutters and the wisteria. And I'd like to paint it. So Monel, with the hat, sat there and read a book, Serrano de Bergerac, she read in French. It sounded fantastic. I hadn't got a clue what she was reading. And I painted her while her mum leaned out the window and chatted away. And at six o'clock, I said, well, I better pack up now. I've got to head off and go and find somewhere to stay. And said, no, no, no. There's a spare room and a, a meal for the night. And that 10 second photo opportunity led to this act of random kindness. And I think, how lucky am I? And that's one of my screensavers on my phone now to remind me to stop at every opportunity and see where occasions lead to. Uh, not every occasion is quite as idyllic and as lovely as this. Because um, I did get a bit of weather. I'm up the Pyrenees now. Over here, I've taken the cagoule off, but I'm going up through the snow and the mist and the and the wild weather. And there's a few leaves clinging to these trees. And I'm reminded that the Pyrenees are one of the great dividing ranges of Europe. And you don't do them lightly. You treat them with respect. Uh, and it's, um, it's a powerful little lesson. I mean, it's 1,500 meters in 30K. And it's higher than Ben Nevis. It's like, this is, this is tough. But I'm up it on my e-bike yeah my tim bike i cycled past a group of cyclists and i couldn't resist it i just went e-bike e-bike but all i could hear was this <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite spots on the Camino is the Hill of Forgiveness, the Alto del Perdon, just outside of Pamplona. And these statues are very iconic. You'll see them, in fact, on your new Cicerone guide. It, it, it's lovely. I'm really pleased you got that. But your picture there it is in the sunshine. And I saw it in rushing rain. Yeah, it looks lovely in the blue sky, but even more atmospheric when it's this wild weather. And you can see here the wind turbines and they're going whoop, 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 whoop. Uh, and then these metal statues are rattling in the wind. It's really powerful. But little pointer to you here. If you pedaled up, don't be too tempted to pedal down the other side because it's really rocky. I went down the tarmac. I thought I'll, I'll do this safely because it's a bit of a challenge. I'm not the only cyclist on this route, Hannah. You can see these two ladies I came across here with their bikes. One on the left, the Hungarian lady with a fold-up bike. What? I mean, that is brilliant. She's got all her stuff in those panniers covered with the tarp there. And she's pedaling on the Camino Frances on that gravelly stuff like that on a fold-up city bike. Wow. And on the right is Mariana. 
Mariana's from Holland and she's in her 60s and she's pedaling that lovely Dutch sit up and beg bike with her two panniers and the dynamo on the front. I was very impressed with these ladies. So, you know, you don't have to do it on an e-bike. I'm glad I did because I was carrying that extra weight with the painting stuff. But I I'm, take my hat off to these ladies. But I'm, I'm glad I did because I'm going up that hill over there and it's probably going to rain. Um, when it doesn't rain, I'm going to try painting. I set up my bike in the middle of this sandy track and either side is spinifex and lovely olive trees, this blue grey in the distance, the snow-capped mountains of Leon. Uh, leading up to the Cruz de Ferro, the Iron Cross, the highest point on the Camino. Blue skies, a windy track, loads of pilgrims walking, and some of them stop to chat to me and to ask what I'm doing. Some of them just walk on by. And that doesn't matter. We're all on this journey together. But how it looks when I'm painting is like this. I've just balanced the paints on my two panniers. Got my brushes, got a little thing of water, a little palette, and I'm hanging the bag of paints off the handlebar. Bar. By the way, I'm wearing a tie, you'll notice, and that's in memory of Martin, actually, my brother Martin, because he was always the best dressed mallet in our family and always wore a tie. So I thought I'll be the only cyclist on the Camino with a tie. And it certainly got people asking questions. Why are you wearing a tie? Somewhere in the far, far distance, I'm going to make my way to Santiago. And here's the pilgrim statues on Mount Gosso, about seven kilometers outside of Santiago. There's the gleaming spires of the cathedral here. But I like these pilgrims with their hands a lot saying, we've made it. We're here, you know, across Europe. And that's where I'm aiming for. And they're aiming for the cathedral. And you go to the cathedral for the midday mass and for one event only. And that is this, the Botta Fumerio. The Botta water? The Botta Fumerio. It's the big incense holder. It's the size of an incinerator. There's eight blokes hauling on ropes down here, Hannah. Uh, and this swings right from one ceiling across to the other and cascades billowing amounts of incense across the transept. It's a piece of theatre like no other with a nun singing as it goes. And it lasts for about three minutes or so. A little tip, if you ever get there, sit north or south of the transept. Don't sit in the main nave because you'll miss the drama of it going up right above your head. And my pal Gary said to me, he said, this is why you come. This is why you come to the cathedral to see this. This spectacle is like, whoa. And in the olden days, of course, it was to fumigate smelly pilgrims. I think we wash a little bit more these days, so it's somehow different, but it's very, very special. And then the dean of the cathedral gave me something special, a, a Compostela. This is your certificate for making it to Santiago de Compostela. And do you see who it's signed to? Yeah. Martin's name. And I, I go, that's really powerful. That business of Martin, I've carried him in my heart. And here he is, he gets his own certificate. And I took a deep breath and I thought, oh, what do I do now? I, I don't, I'm not sure I'm quite ready to go home. So I carried on to Mushia and finished there. There's something actually about the Camino. There's four different reasons for doing the Camino de Santiago. There's the historical, you know, it's been done for a thousand years. There's the physical, you're going over these vast landscapes like this and high mountains and everlasting vistas. Um, there's uh, cultural, you're meeting people with different manners and customs and different foods. And then there's the spiritual reason, you know, what's the meaning of life? And that's obvious. It's a comfy bed and something nice to eat. And uh, give me a joke along the way, please, and a reason to smile. Whatever you do, don't give me a puncture up here on the mountain. And, uh, you know, things happen. Not everything happens as you hope or expect, but you cope with it. We have stuff that goes on. And that's my Camino. And this is how I painted it, Hannah. Each day, I, I made a moment to stop and paint. Sometimes it's at the beginning of the day. Sometimes it's late on. But every view, there's a reason to be absorbed in that moment. And my question to you, Hannah, did I do Martin proud? Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. I felt him every day. I called my bike Martin, actually. I, I found myself saying, come on, Martin, we can do it. We're, we're doing OK. If you want to follow my stuff, you can go to timmymallet.co.uk. That's where you'll get a pinky monkey mallet. Yay! 
or Timmy stuff, find out what I'm up to. And then there's an opportunity to follow my activities and what I'm up to on Facebook, Twitter, Insta, TikTok, and Strava. Some of those paintings you've just been looking at are available as limited edition prints from my fine art website. It's got a lovely name, malletspalette.co.uk. And then, of course, there's my book. So if you go to timmymallet.co.uk, you can get a signed copy of Utterly Brilliant My Life's Journey, which is published by SPCK. And in it is how I plan to do the Camino, how you do it, and other bits like that. I've got a hardback and paperback. It's also available in an ebook and there's an audio book. Guess who does the narration of the audio? Well, actually, Mark says listening to you on Audible is a very enjoyable way to hear your story. Oh, thanks, Mark. Really, really pleased. Now, I'm sure you've got a few questions for me, have you, Hannah? Um, how much cycle touring had you done before you took on this trip? Okay, I'd done uh, coast to coast across Hadrian's Wall and I'd done coast to goes across Devon. So those are three day trips. I've, I've done a couple of cycling holidays where you go and um, the bikes are provided and somebody leads the way and each day, you know, you, you move on to somewhere else. So they, they're, they're quite good. In fact, you can do the Camino on a bike like that. There's, a, there's companies where you say, how long have you got? Okay, I've got a week. Right. Okay. So but the very first time I looked at the Camino with my pal Gary, we flew to Madrid took the train to Lyon and there's a company who take the bags on for you brilliant and provide the bikes and oh okay uh, and you sort of say how far you want to go each day I'll, I'll do 30 miles 35 miles okay um, and that's a good way to get into it but when we'd done that Gary and I both said we want to do it again but the full Camino and by that Gary meant cycling from Saint-Jean to Santiago and I meant cycling from home and I, I just had this idea of setting out from home um, yeah so cycle touring is about having a go but the last bit of cycle touring I did before that was about two weeks ago and I took uh, five of my pals to southwest Wales oh God's own country I love it love it beautiful cycle cycling a lot of hills doesn't matter on an e-bike and i'll tell you why it doesn't matter on an e-bike hannah because on an e-bike you stop more and i'm a big believer in stopping as often as possible so i stop lots it annoys the hell out of my friends mallet stopping again what's he seen now uh and i find it really uh thrilling thrilling to stop as often as possible the cycling is not the end in itself. It's what you're going to see and experience that's going to make this magical. The Camino de Santiago, when you do it, you're doing it every day. My pals, Graham and Carol, say this. They say, when you're pedaling it, you're living it every single day. And I do. I think about it all the time. Um, Pauline has asked if there's going to be a video or a program about your cycling trip. Um, there are videos from it, and you can see that at timmymallet.co.uk because I put it on my uh, uh, the blog up there, and each what there's a video. I did lots of little videos as I went along. It's just on my phone. And I didn't take a film crew with me because then it would change its nature. There's something about a, a film crew because they want jeopardy. They want things to go wrong and drama. And also, uh, I wanted to concentrate on me in the moment martin i was going through you know a bit of personal stuff with my dear brother you know, having just died of uh, dementia and so no I, I didn't particularly want to do that uh it's nice to share the story in my book and on an occasion like this actually hannah yeah i have to say having reading the book is such a it's such a consuming experience because you've got your voice um if you're listening to it on audible you've literally got your voice um but also when you're reading the book you've got the words that you're reading and then you've got the sketches and the paintings so it feels much more immersive than than just a book so maybe pauline that'll that'll help if you if you get a copy of that billy wants to know would you consider cycling other pilgrimage routes well, every journey is a sort of a pilgrimage in a way. That's a bit of a weird thing to say, but you know what I mean? It, it is sort of because things happen. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I possibly will. It's not that, uh, that it doesn't have to be a pilgrimage or a recognised pilgrimage route for it to be a pilgrimage, if you see what I mean. Yeah, true, true. So what's next for you cycling wise? Have you got a, 
I know you said you're going tomorrow, but have you got another epic cycle tour planned? I have. I've got a really big epic tour. And, and I mentioned it to my family last week and they went, no chance, Mallet. So I've got a little bit of work just on my family first, just to ease them in gently into, I have to do this. A part of this is if you've got to do something, do it, do it now. And, you know, try and make sure that your family are happy with it. But it's important to do it because life's too short. You know, it, 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 you've got to seize the day. Carpe diem, make these things happen. My friends said to me that um, these are the golden years. Wow. Crikey, sounds like it's all going to end. No, it's not. But when you've got your fitness and your health and, and your stamina and your, your eagerness to embrace cycle touring, for goodness sake, take every opportunity. So I do. Fabulous. Can you can you give us a hint about what it might be? I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll make the announcement on the 1st of Jan. I'll tell you on the 1st of January what it is. Uh, and I will be setting off in the spring next year. And it will be a thriller. And my question, my thing to you is, please, will you come and if you see me cycling past, give me a wave or get on your bike and come along and join me. Fabulous. Lovely idea. I think we've got through most of the questions. There was one from Anonymous and people of a, a certain vintage will know what this person means. But she says, say la. <laughs> it's been a real pleasure this tonight. And thank you for your lovely questions. And I hope you enjoy your cycle touring wherever you go. And remember to stop and look at it all and to be in the moment. I think all we ever have to do with our cycle touring is reach our potential. You don't have to be the best, the fastest or anything like that. Just the best that you can be and make the most of each and every day. That's all we have to do. And um, Hannah, you're doing that with Cicero and with these guides, which are really inspiring. It's lovely to realize other people have done these journeys and they're there. It's like giving you a helping hand along the way. So enjoy your Camino if you're going to do it yourself and if you're going to set off from home. Yeah, do it. Buen Camino. Be very exciting. And if you decide you only want to do just a little bit, that's that's fine too. It's not how much you do, it's how much fun you have along the way. That's all it is. Yeah. Fantastic. Just what perfect, perfect way to end. And I think we'll we'll all be thinking a little bit of you and, of course, of your brother, Martin, next time we head out on our bikes. So thank you so much for sharing that and the, the paintings and, and all of it. Thank you so much. Thanks, Hannah. Thanks ever so much. Thanks, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, it's been lovely meeting you tonight and uh, see you on the bike. I'll ring the bell. I'll go. Hello. Thanks, Timmy. Timmy was fabulous. I'm sure you agree. For everything Timmy Mallet, including signed copies of his book, Utterly Brilliant, or for copies of his artwork, visit timmymallet.co.uk. For a discount on any of our Camino guidebooks, including Cycling the Camino or Walking the Camino, please visit cicerone.co.uk and enter the code CAMINO. I hope you enjoyed the latest episode of Footnotes, the Cicerone podcast. I'd love to know what you think or if there's anything you'd like us to cover in future episodes. Please email live at cicerone.co.uk or leave a review on your podcast platform. We'll be back soon, but please come and join us on our social channels. We're on all the main ones as Cicerone Press and we also have a Facebook group, Cicerone Connect, where you can meet and chat to other outdoor enthusiasts. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you soon.